Okay, so it starts the form, it's instructions all the way through, and it very clearly says three years of IADH membership. It also gives instructions on how to get your IADH membership number. We have a membership secretary who works exclusively for IADH one day a week. And so you can contact her for your membership number on membership.iadh.org, or you can contact your own society. You would get your membership number that way. Okay. Um, the technical information, it tells you how to fill in the form. And it starts with your name and your family name, your job, your address, your phone number, and your number, okay? You then indicate your type of IADH membership. If you're an individual, if you hold your membership via IADH member society, there's a drop down list. And then you start with the fellowship application, which talks about evidence of your activity. And you can see there are 30 points in this activity. And to score to be IADH active, you need to score at least six points. The next stage, and don't worry if you can't fill this box in, but we need to acknowledge the people who have served on IADH committees, the executive, the international committees, the research committees, here is if people have been council members or on task forces. Again, there's another two points if you've been on an education task force, for example, or one of our um, next comes if you have attended any of the international conferences, not just as a speaker, but as a delegate, if you have attended the conference and you get one point per conference, a maximum of five points. Really important here, there is a minimum of one point. You have to score one point. Here, if you've entered any of the research competitions, you don't have to have won, you just have to have participated. We have case competitions, we have clinical education, posters, we have those at every conference. If you have entered one or two competitions, you can earn points. Next, it becomes the people who've worked so hard organizing IADH conferences locally, our Santos organization team, our Dubai organization team, people who've worked locally can also score up to three points for their fellowship. Next, is if you gave any talks, any symposia, if you were invited to speak at any of the IADH conferences. But you can score enough points if you are active within your own society, because this is what makes an IADH fellow. So if you have held a term, if you've been a treasurer or a secretary, you can score three points. Again, you choose your society. But you don't have to be one of the big guys. You can also write here if you've attended meetings of your local society, online or offline, or if you've attended any of the free events given by affiliated societies, the Irish Society, the Canadian Society, lots of um, free events out there for IADH members. So this means that you can score again three points for what you've done in your national society. Now, the next one was a very, very big and interesting uh, exercise for us. And we have piloted the next section on many different types of clinicians. This is about clinical training and clinical practice. And all of our team, um, and all of our international advisory committee and education committee were unanimous that you do not need to have formal training in special care dentistry to get an IADH fellowship. However, 
um, obviously in all of the boxes that you see coming, we have to credit people who have that. We have to show, um, we have to give them points for that, but to pass this domain, you can pass this domain without formal training. So what we would ask you to do is add everything that you've got and that you do into the boxes to uh, assess this. So it starts with the, the big stuff. And I don't want people to panic when they see this. It may be blank in a lots of people's applications. Um, I teach on a specialist training program. Um, so, you know, I'm very aware that people who've got specialist training in Japan or in um, maybe in Malaysia or Australia or the UK can find this easy because they'll get the points by having their specialist training. Um, regarding evidence, any certification of specialist list for special care dentistry needs a certificate um, attached. You don't need to translate your certificate. It can be your, a copy of your original. The next is if you've completed at least two years, uh, two to three years full-time specialist or equivalent part-time training in special care dentistry. Again, add your qualification, add your certificate. The next is for people who've done part-time training over two years. We would ask for details of the diploma, the certificate, of uh, where they studied, how they studied. It may have been an online two-year part-time course. It may have been, but you need to give your details and your certificate. Then comes those people who've done their training as part of a different specialty, pediatric dentistry, gerodontology, oral medicine, pediatric, orthodontics, public health. Lots of people have studied special care dentistry, have studied disability or had access and training in disability during their other training. This is important to be able to document that. We'll ask for details, how much training, and, and, and various amounts of points will be added. And you add your certificates. This is for the residency, people who've done a, a clinical attachment or a residency or fellowship. And again, um, the evidence of that, please. Then here is your continuing education courses. So this is the part-time e-learning evening or short courses that you've carried out, a maximum of 10 years. I mean, you don't need to write 100 courses here, but some key courses. If I was filling this in or if I was advising my own junior dentists who were starting, I would say fill in at least 20 courses if you have them. Uh, but fill it, but no more than 20. Nobody wants 50 or 60 courses, 20 key courses that show breadth. So they're not all the same thing. They're not all about medically complex or they're not all about dysphagia. They show a little bit of breadth. That's will get you maximum points in this area. The title here is Continue Education Relevant to Special Care Dentistry or Disability. Um, so if it, you've been on a course about autism, special educational needs, or if you've been to a dementia awareness training, all of these things are things that you can add to show your training. Next, um, this is where you show your activity. And we will ask you to show the number of sessions that you do every month, for example. It may well be in a hospital, in a government setting, in a nursing home, in a prison, in an acute hospital, in GA, in sedation, or in domiciliary or outreach. If we've forgotten anything, you can write it here, free text. If you, can, you have not demonstrated sufficient points to pass that domain, then you will be asked to submit a clinical logbook. We will send it to you and we will ask to see evidence of anonymized clinical logbook. It's in the resource pages. Now, not everyone will have to fill that in, 
But if you have been unable to satisfy the judges in that area, you will receive a logbook to fill in from 15 to 50, five zero cases. The next section, uh, research and scholarship. First um, boxes are for PhDs in an area of disability and oral health, masters, uh, research awards and bursaries, lists of peer reviewed publications, guidelines that you've been involved in. We ask you to, um, to, to attach the guidelines or provide us with a link. Book chapters relevant to the scope of disability and oral health. That's a very wide scope. For those people who are not particularly research active, any clinical audits relevant that they have carried out. Also here are any conference oral presentations or conference poster presentations, academic appointments. This is an important one, mentoring or supervising a revision or projects, um, editorial and reviewers duties. So let's move on to education and teaching. This is really important to us in IADH. This is to capture your activity relation to education. Um, because really important, this is a very small number of us in special care dentistry and disability and oral health. We need to share our knowledge. And IADH fellows will be people who generously share their knowledge. So here is big points for people who've developed curriculum. Big points for people who've developed teaching tools, student innovations. This is the box for people who do any regular symposiums or seminars in their local universities or in continuing education programs. People who teach in a variety of formats, online, universities, colleges, whatever. This box is important about mentoring because we know from the literature and the evidence that people get confident in treating people with disabilities if they are mentored by other people. And then we're looking here for, key, for lectures that people do at other, not just IADH, any of their local meetings. If you give a talk at your local society, um, you can write them in this book, in this box. Same with posters at the Japanese society meeting if you're putting a poster in. This is where you're going to write all of your uh, evidence here. Finally, the final page is about community engagement and outreach. This is about evidencing important activity of what you do in the community working with vulnerable groups, community projects, advocacy, vol voluntary work and resource development. This is where your Special Olympics work would go. This is where if you're working with, for example, deaf community and you're looking at resources for them, or you are you know, working uh, with programs with residential homes, for example, developing leaflets, websites, um, related to support those activities. If you're designing service models, this is where the people working in public health can, can really become outstanding. If this, this may be their outstanding domain, uh, where they can look at the services that they've developed, the resources for, those, um, for that stuff, the voluntary work that is being done and any other community or personal activities with volunteering or action or advocacy where you've advocated for specifically or worked with local member organizations, this is where you can write this down. And then at the end, a very, very kind of important personal statement that you will write, which tells us a little bit of the essence of you. 
what are the things you are most proud of? What obstacles you've overcome? Perhaps um, that your interaction or your philosophies or your, your benefits or, or your, you know, of, of summarizing your interaction with your member organizations and IADH. Changes that you, are, that, that you achieved. Um, don't hesitate to, to write about the local context because we realize that people who are perhaps working in emerging areas in the Philippines or in Thailand are in a different complete stage of this. So we need to be able to add context here. And this is maximum 300 words. At the end, your referees, and you will sign to say this is trustworthy. You allow for the information to be set to be shared with the adjudication panel and your referees. And you are um, giving your agreement that should we need better evidence, we will come back to you uh, to ask for that. You then will confirm you've paid and you'll take a great big deep breath and press send. This is the list of countries that can have it reduced a rate, it's taken from the World Health Data Bank. And there you go, right at the end, there is a press and submit your, um, your, uh, sub, your submission. When we're marking, obviously, um, we would like to see good evidence in each area. What we would say is that we don't expect everyone to be good at everything. Some people will only have a small amount of evidence in perhaps their teaching or their research. And what we have agreed is that if somebody has got small amount in one area, they can compensate for being outstanding in one of the others. They may be outstanding in IADH activity if they've been to 20 conferences and been on a committee. Um, they may be outstanding in education, but perhaps not so good on the clinical or not so active anymore on the clinical. So what we're saying is that we can compensate in one area. That so that, and so this is very important when you get your feedback. Because if you haven't passed one domain, you can either choose in your two years to increase your activity in that domain if it nearly made it, or put all your efforts into becoming outstanding in something else. It's probably easier to um, achieve outstanding in a community action than you know, getting a research project up and down. So you can compensate. And two years may well be enough time for you to compensate. So your feedback is really important. Mm -hmm.